Hi there, this is section 1.6 for Math 116, and in this section it's looking at a whole bunch of applications of functions to various business models. And the four main things that seem to come up a lot in this section are finding profit functions, finding break-even points, looking at marginal profit or marginal cost or marginal revenue, and then looking at equilibrium points. So I'm going to sort of introduce all three of these topics in one problem and then look at another problem for equilibrium points. So I'm going to show you some of these terms in an example. Question number 17 on page 113 says a jewelry maker is basically making necklaces. It's kind of redundant, isn't it? A jewelry maker makes jewelry. Anyway, her cost function looks like this. C of x is equal to 35x plus 1650 and x is the number of necklaces sold. So I'm assuming she's making pretty nice necklaces, not, um, I don't know, <laughs> not little string necklaces that she's selling on Etsy. And the revenue function is r of x equals 85x. So I added a couple sections. This actual part A is not in your book. This is my own bonus section. Bonus question, what is the profit function? Okay, so for a lot of these questions, ask for the profit function. And here's the one formula that you need to know, and that is this. You probably could sit and think about this for a moment and come up with this. Profit is equal to your revenue minus your cost. So your profit is going to be however much money you take in minus the amount of money you had to spend making necklaces or dryers or computers or whatever else you're actually physically making. So profit equals revenue minus cost. So if you wanted your profit function, so if you wanted a function, p of x, this is going to be your revenue function minus your cost function. And remember, x is equal to, in this case, the number of necklaces sold but it could be dryers or, again, computers or whatever else you're selling. So in this case, r of x is equal to 85x minus, the cost function is 35x plus 1650. That's the cost function. So your profit function, when you pull this through, is 85x minus 35x minus 1650 which comes down to, reduces to 50x minus 1650. So the profit, and I say her, if I say the jewelry maker is her, it's because I'm thinking of my mom, who's a woman who also makes jewelry. So the profit for the number of necklaces sold is 50x minus 1650, and that's in dollars, dollars US. So the actual book, um, gave you this question. How many necklaces must she sell in order to break even? So in order to break even, there's a couple of different ways to think about this. Let me see if I put this function up here. We could think of our profit function as this. It's 50x, oops, 50x minus 1650. All right, here it is. We've got to zoom out. Ready? Where is it? You've got to zoom way out to see it. Come on, baby. Hello. There it is. So the profit function, this line represents the profit. So below this line, right down here, your profit is negative. And above this line, your profit is positive. So the break-even point is the place where the profit crosses the x-axis, or the place where the profit is 0. So in this case, 33, 0. So if you have a graphing function, one way you can do this, I will do it on paint here. I'll get a new picture. Don't save. So if you're looking at the break even point, break even, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can graph the profit function and look for where it crosses the x axis. So look for the x intercept. And that's going to be where it crosses the x-axis, that's when it changes from positive to negative. Or my, the way I like to do it is say you want the profit to be greater than or equal to zero. Ideally, you're breaking even. You're breaking even exactly when the profit equals zero. That is just breaking even, my friends. <laughs> you're making a profit of zero, but anything greater than that is, is doing better. So where is your profit, p of x, equal to zero? Well, remember, we just calculated the profit function is this. 
So now we have an equation and we can simply solve for x. That's easy, we do this all the time. So in order to solve this function for x, we have 50x, put the 1650 on the other side, and now divide both sides by 50, right? And we get x is equal to 33. So this tells us that she has to sell 33 necklaces in order to break even. Okay? Once you sell 34, you're making money. If you sell 32, then you're still not making money. And you could see that again on this graph. 33 is the point where it crosses the x-axis. Ta-da! So, how many must she sell to break even? 33. What is the marginal profit? Again, I made, made up this question. If you're looking in your book, you say, it didn't ask me that question. Well, I'm asking you that question, and I'm the teacher, and I might put it on the test. So there. So the marginal profit. This is the slope of the profit function. So from now on, when you see the word marginal, I want you to think slope. Marginal means slope, and if you continue on to Math 148, that will help you out. So the marginal profit is the slope of the profit function. How steeply are you making money? How fast is your profit growing? Looks like it's growing pretty fast, but if you zoom in a little bit, it might not. Well, it's, it's actually a pretty steep profit function there. See how it's a steep line? It's not a line that's angled off that way. So, going back here, if you look at the profit function, I will type it in here, we had p of x is equal to 50x minus 1650. This number right here, 50, is the slope, because that's the slope, and this is the y-intercept. You remember that from your equation of the line. So what is the marginal profit? The answer is 50. So when the question says, what is the marginal profit, the answer is 50, because that is the slope of the profit function. Explain what this means. So some of the questions ask you to explain what the marginal profit means. In this case, it's saying, for every additional one necklace that she sells, she, my mom, her profit changes by $50. And in this case, it increases by $50, right? Good job, mom. So the profit is going up by $50. So anytime you have the word marginal, it means the slope of the change. So your marginal cost would be for every additional, if you want to interpret the marginal cost, you would say for every additional one sold, every additional necklace sold, the cost changes by blank, whatever it was. So marginal cost is always having to do with slope and the rate of change. So again, this sentence here would be answering the question, what is the marginal profit, and explain what that means. So I'm just going to zip to the top here. I told you profit functions. We found that. Break-even points, that's where the profit's zero. Marginal profit, that is the slope of the profit function. And now I wanted to quickly show you equilibrium points. There's a nice example in your book, scrolling, scrolling. This one, page 110. It's a supply and demand for dryers. So on the page, they give you a nice function. They break through all the detail, but basically they say P is the price of your dryer, and Q is the quantity or the number that is being sold. And the supply function looks like this. So you're putting them on the market at this rate. This is a function based on the price and the quantity. And the demand looks like this. They're two different functions. One is a supply function and one is a demand function. And you can look at this page to see wh how they came up with these two equations. It's pretty clever. So the question asks you in this example, what is the equilibrium point? So the equilibrium point is the place where the supply equals supply equals the demand. I can't spell. Actually, I can spell. I just can't type. So that is, where does the supply equal the demand? So you can do this two different ways. You can either do it algebraically with a blank piece of paper here. You could say, well, my supply function looks like this. I have my supply function is P is equal to 2Q plus 170. That's supply. 
and demand, the price for the demand function, the price minus 5q, that's the quantity, plus 450. So to find the equilibrium point, you set these two equations equal to each other. So you would say that's 2q plus 170. You set that equal to minus 5q plus 450, and you solve for q. So q is equal to 40, and then you can plug it back into either one of these equations, and you get the price equals 250. So when does the supply equal the demand? Right here, when the price is $250, and you are supplying, you're selling 40. I guess that's 40 a week. It can't be 40, period. And just to help you bring understand these concepts, here are the two functions. This 2x, that's this red line is the supply function. The blue line is the demand function. And the equilibrium point is where they cross, right there. 40, 250. So if you're really clever with your graphing calculator, you can just plug these both in there and figure out where they cross. The intersection point is the equilibrium point. And you can notice, again, the blue line is the demand function. Blue demand, red supply. So as the supply goes up, it crosses here. Demand is going down. So supply goes up, demand goes down. As the demand goes up, supply goes down. Because nobody wants something if it's plentiful. Isn't that the sad truth in life? If it's plentiful, you know, you don't want to pay as much for it. So hopefully this will help you answer these questions. Keep me posted if you have other specific questions on the homework. And good luck with this section.